Oh, God, it's just been so good today. Oh, that healing power just flowing and flowing. And all that divine energy and all of that flow of the power of the love and the joy and the oceans of God of just washing through me and over me. Whoa, surges and springs of all that eternal life. It's just so marvelous. Of course, we know that God is good every time. He's good all the time. He's good in every way. And he's good on every day. <laughs> every day in every way. God is always pouring out his power. And that's one thing we need to realize that God is always pouring out the power and we just need to learn how to be receptive to it. And then we'll have all good every day in every way. And we'll always be on the mountain type of joy. Ooh, I just uh, I mean, this is just beyond, I mean, just beyond good. Just totally unimagining uh, ability to imagine how good all this has been. It's just marvelous. But we are studying in Colossians, uh, and we had just finished up chapter 3, and now we are going to begin in chapter 4, verse 1. And uh, it is now 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, Central Standard Time in the USA. And so I hope you heard my other programs at 2.30 and 3.30 and 5 and so forth. But if you, you can review those later. But now we're going to start in here where we left off. Uh, we left off at the last verse of number 3 of uh, chapter 3. There what we were talking about. He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he doeth, you know, and doesn't matter what kind of person, what, whether he is a master or a servant. And so then in chapter 4, we start in, in chapter 4 where it said, Masters, let me get that. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, you see. Well, you know, if you're really continuing in prayer and you're really watching with thanksgiving, you know, then you're not going to have any problem in knowing how to properly treat those subordinates that are working for you and knowing what the proper uh, way of, uh, uh, of approaching it and, and how to... Uh, Keep yourself in the proper order of God where you treat your uh, employees correctly and you treat the people that you're supervising correctly or the people that are under you in any way that you don't, you know, you don't uh, uh, misuse your authority or anything because you understand that you are under the authority of God and you understand that God uh, uh, intends for you to uh, look to him for the way to conduct your business and the way to conduct your job. And then you're thankful for the fact that you have that position. And you, because you're thankful that you are a master or you are uh, a, a head of a department or, or you are, are a, a, a head of a particular uh, unit or a military unit or whatever you're the head of, you are so thankful to God that he has put you in that position that you want to do it the right way and you want to be respectful of everybody and you want to be a respectable leader and you want to be a, a good leader. Okay, so it's, uh, everything is done decently and in order and it all works out. It works out so much better. And so we want to go to now to uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer. And, okay, we said that. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. With all, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I 
also am in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. You say, yeah, you know, I mean, you always pray for the leaders and for the, the uh, pastors and for the teachers, and you pray for those missionaries that have that hard job of going to places where maybe they're not well received and, and they have to have the door open by God. God has to send his angels and open up the door. He's got to send his uh, the Holy Spirit to uh, begin to convict hearts, begin to open ears and uh, get pay people to have people to, to come to the place where they can actually hear the message and uh, they can actually understand uh, that it is what they need to hear, and so forth. And so that comes by means of prayer. And that's the reason why we always pray every day for our missionaries. And we always pray for our pastors, leaders, and teachers. Because they need every bit of that uh, godly Holy Spirit and the godly sending of his angels to help to get the doors open to get the message out. And, you know, so this can be one of the reasons why the church is not being as effective as it should be today, is that we're not doing near as much praying for the people that are in charge of speaking the word. Now, are those missionaries going forward? Are those people that are evangelists? Are those people that are going out door to door witnessing? Those people that are preaching on the street? Where, whatever it is, our prayer warriors and all, all of uh, the members of the church and all Christians should be praying constantly that doors will be open, that the Holy Spirit will be with those individuals, whoever they are and wherever they are in this country or any other country, that the doors will be open and the ears will be open and the eyes will be open to see and hear and feel and understand the Holy Spirit and understand the message of the gospel. And so that's a very important scripture right there for us to always know. And so uh, we need to always continue in prayer, praying uh, God will open it to us, and I may speak it and make it manifest, you know, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> verse 5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. You see, he just continues like this, <laughs> as he has all the way from the beginning of this book. He just continues. I mean, he just continues to lay it all out there. You know, I mean, he said, he just said, at first he was saying, <laughs> set your affections on uh, if you if they if ye then be risen with Christ, make sure you always act like it, uh, act like it, walk like it, talk like it, uh, be like it, uh, and demonstrate it. Oh yes, and so that it will be a witness. And then he just keeps uh, going here, you know. And what did he say about the word? Uh, let's see, that was in that was in verse fourteen. What was that about? He said uh, in verse three fourteen about the word. Uh, and I can't, and what was that? Well, I'll get back to it later, <laughs> but he said something like the same way about the word, you know, uh, that the word would be opened up to us, or that the word would be properly respected or something like that, and now here he comes to this point, and he said, well, you are out there with those people in the, those worldly people, those those that cuss, drink, run with with those that do, <laughs> and everything. Uh, make sure you maintain your testimony because that will be the best use of the time. Your time will be well used because your testimony will be tend to lead people to the Lord, and you can't always be spending time actually opening the Bible and showing them verses or talking to them about the Lord, but you can for certainly walk circumspectly. You can certainly walk uh, upright, and you can certainly deal honestly, and you can certainly be a, a person who is, uh, lives their life with love and shows difference to other people and the right kind of humility and so forth, redeeming the time toward those that are out. And it redeems the time. And remember that the time is going by, and every chance we get 
the two at certain times testimonies, certain times witness, and certain times just plain demonstrating love and everything before the world. All of that redeems what little time that we have, uh, you know, on this earth to be able to do these things. And so, then uh, what does he go on to say there about redeeming the time? He says, uh, here's how you redeem it. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with, you know, he don't stop with, with grace, you know. Don't just be a graceful person, but, but also get out that salt and season it. <laughs> Make sure it is salty and that you may know how you ought to answer every man. I mean, good, redeem the time and also... No, how to give a wise answer to everything. I mean, we got to get down to prayer to be able to follow all of this, you know. And so don't say we can get by without prayer because you don't do all this that Paul's telling you to do. It's going to take a lot of prayer. Oh, believe me, you know, it's going to take some prayer to be able to do all of this. He's really laying it out there. And he says, all, all my state shall kick it because declare unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord who I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your estate and com and comfort your heart. Always, you know, let your speech be seen with some and then always think about how you're going to comfort other people. Do I need to send somebody over here to comfort somebody? Or to tell them of my state or, or to find out their state so I can better pray? Or well, do I need to look into this or that? Or, or send uh, uh, somebody uh, 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 that is working for me over here to check on somebody? Why, what do I need to do, you know, to always stay in sync with what God wants me to do and to check, to know how to pray for everybody? And that's what he's saying. He's saying, so he's going to send that, that guy over there. And uh, find out what's going on so he can pray. And then it says, with, uh, uh, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. You know, not going to leave them in the dark either. You know, they're going to let them know exactly what's going on. Missionaries, they let us know exactly what's going on in the mission field. And then we know, and then it's our duty to pray about that. Okay, and so then it says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. And Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto ye, receive him. Oh, yes, you know, to learn how to receive people in the right way. Know how to treat them right with love and kindness, with deference and humility. And Jesus, which is called justice, who are of the circumcision, those only, uh, you know, that's the Jews, uh, uh, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. You know, so always considering what people are doing for you and being thankful for what they're doing and learning about them so you can pray for them and so you can pray for and be thankful for everything that is that people are doing, always being extremely grateful for every little thing that is happening to you, being done for you, that God is doing, and, and always being looking out for other people and understanding what their needs are and praying for them and being in tune with everything and understand everything that's going on and be praying constantly. You know, praying without ceasing. That's the main idea of all that. And so we'll stop and pray right now because that's what we really need to do. Pray for people. I pray right now for everybody. Oh, everybody that is working on the mission field, everybody that's working in the churches, and everybody that's working on the street. Oh, dear God, that you would just give them the power to send forth a message and just open the doors unto them. And now we pray for everybody that has cancer that you would just completely uh, root out all cancer, root out all lung disease, root out all emphysema and COPD, root out all liver disease, root out all uh, uh, kidney disease and all diabetes. And oh, dear God, just touch everybody and heal them of all lupus and anything like they have have like that or, or any kind of osteoporosis or bone disease. Dear, dear God, give people bone health, give them joint health, give them heal their arthritic pains and heal all of the rheumatoid arthritis. And oh, dear God, just heal people of muscle sclerosis and, sclerosis and every type of nervous disorder. Oh, we pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, and heal 
people of all of their difficulties in ambulatory of being uh, able to get around and just continue to cause them to have a sturdy, steady, healthy body and mind and soul. And now we pray, dear God, that you would just break people off of all addictions, addictions to every drug. And oh, dear God, just break off their addictions to cigarettes and tobacco and all of the drugs like heroin and oh, opioids and all of the drugs. Oh, dear God, like crack and, and cocaine. And now we pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal everybody. We pray in the name of Jesus.